Hello and welcome to the Sons and Daughters of Encouragement Daily Bible Study. My name is Elia Lefferts and I'm excited to bring you this daily study as a ministry outreach of the Kingdom Crew Christian Fellowship. Um, you can find us on YouTube, podcasts, uh, uh, iPodcast, Anchor.fm, Spotify, all that stuff. So we have a weekly podcast going into your walk with Christ. And then these daily Bible studies, although I'm hoping to enrich um, believers as well, they're kind of geared toward people who are not sure or new believers or anything like that. So I kind of break it down in that way. But of course, I would hope anyone would be ministered to even seasoned believers. But um, that being the case, in this daily Bible study, we do a book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. It's called Expository Study. So we're in the book of Acts. We're in the end of chapter 15. Paul and Barnabas finished their first missionary journey to spread the gospel and plant churches for the first time ever. There was a lot of contention about non-Jewish people coming to the faith and accepting Christ. And then there was this council called the Jerusalem Council, where they all got together and all the elders and original apostles and church leaders got together in Jerusalem, decided um, that the Gentiles, non-Jewish people, did not need to be circumcised. And now a letter was written to give to the Gentile believers, and that was starting to be spread. Paul and Barnabas went to Antioch, their original place, uh, starting and finishing place for the first missionary journey. And that brings us to where we are now. So let's have a great word of prayer, and then we'll get into Acts 15, chapter 15, verse 36. Heavenly Almighty Father, thank you so much, God, for even just being here with us. God, we appreciate your presence. God, we are thankful for the breath of life that you've chosen to see fit to give us one more day. And God, in that one more day, may we please be one more voice for you. If we don't, Lord, who will? And God, we just appreciate the spirit you've put in us. Please fill us with your Holy Spirit and give us a wonderful Bible study. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's begin. So we're at verse 36, Acts chapter 15. After some time had passed, Paul said to Barnabas, Let's go back and visit the brothers and sisters in every town where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. Barnabas wanted to take along John Mark, but Paul insisted that they should not take along this man who had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not gone on with them to the work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company, and Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed off to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and departed after being commended by the brothers and sisters to the grace of the Lord. He traveled through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. Well, let's, let's break that down before we move on to chapter 16 and just do a few verses there. So some time had passed, meaning in Antioch. So Paul and Barnabas had spent years together, literally years preaching, teaching strengthening, encouraging. So they are, must have a very close bond. And they remained in Antioch again, teaching and proclaiming the word of the Lord after this Jerusalem council. Well, after some time had passed in that area, Paul said, hey, let's go back and let's check on these guys. We gave the uh, word of the Lord. We planted churches. Let's see what's going on. Let's, let's strengthen them, encourage them, make sure there's good sound theology. And so Barnabas wanted to take his cousin, John Mark, who we commonly scholarly believe to be the Mark that penned the Gospel of Mark. So this Mark, if you recall a few chapters back in chapter 13, he left about halfway through, not even, about a quarter of the way through the original, uh, original missionary journey. And we don't exactly know why it's not spoken of in the Bible. There are several interpretations and suggestions. But since those are just that, <laughs> interpretations and suggestions, I'll leave it to you to find that out on your own if you're interested. But as far as the Word of God goes, we don't know why. That being the case, Paul was like, I'm not taking that guy. Um, and then Barnabas, it's his cousin. He's like, hey, man, it's, it's good. He wants to come. Like, let's give him another chance. And so sharply that they parted ways. Now, granted, it's important to know, 
first of all, this is the last time we hear about Barnabas in the whole book of Acts. And there's 13 more chapters. So, you know, it's, it's sad that we no longer hear from him. However, Paul later writes in some of his letters speaking very kindly about Barnabas. And these letters were commonly believed to be written after this moment when they parted. So obviously, let me, let me rephrase that. Not obviously, very probably, they remained friends. This was not um, the kind of agreement that ended with, I'm never talking to you again. And it's also important to note, God used this to now spread the gospel two more ways. They could both go back and strengthen individual parts of where they had originally gone on the first missionary journey. So this is pretty awesome. So Barnabas took his cousin and they went to Cyprus. They sailed to Cyprus, which is where Barnabas is from. And that was the first place they went on the first journey. So there he goes down there. Paul takes Silas, this guy we heard about in yesterday's study, chapter 15, uh, right around verse 30 something. No, actually, I'm sorry. That was prior to that. We heard about Silas. He was chosen to go with Paul and Barnabas to help you know, spread, spread the message. And he was also a Roman citizen. So this helped to kind of ease the gap with the Gentiles. So that being the case, Paul took Silas and they went through Syria and Cilicia, which would have been north and west, uh, traveling around the coast, which was part of what they did when they did their missionary journey. Those are part of the places they hit. And in verse 41, it says, he traveled through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. Well, let's take a quick peek, if we will. I found this awesome, oops, found this awesome map. And the source of the map is on the bottom of the map. So you can see who that came from. Here we are. It's uh, conformingtojesus.com is where I found this map. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is Paul's second missionary journey. It's Paul and Silas. And they're starting in the right-hand side. <coughs> Excuse me. In the middle, from top to bottom in the middle. You can see Syria right there. Well, if you go to right to the coast, just about, it's Antioch. So this is where they started. You'll see the little box says, Paul and Barnabas divided over John Mark. Barnabas and John Mark sail to Cyprus. Paul and Silas go through Syria and Cilicia, like I just said. Well, if you start in Antioch and go to the left through the ocean, through the sea, you're going to see the island of Cyprus. So this is where Barnabas and Mark went. Paul is going to be the red line, We're not following Barnabas anymore in the book of Acts at all. Paul heads over to Tarsus, which is where he's from, and then he goes through Derby, Lystra, where he meets Timothy, and we're going to read about that just in a moment. And then you can see in this missionary journey, he goes all the way to Europe. This is a huge journey. The first missionary journey was not even a third of this. I mean, I'd say even a quarter at that, but you know, maybe a third, maybe a third. So this is a much further reach. Um, they're going to Troas and Neapolis, Philippi, Amph Amphipolis, Apollonia, Thessalonica, or Thessalonica, Berea. Now this is where... <laughs> Things get, things get tough when we're up there, but we'll, we'll read about that. And then all the way down to Athens, Corinth, Sancreis, um, Ephesus. I mean, and then look at that sailing all the way back to Caesarea by Jerusalem. And then heading back up after going to Jerusalem, heading back up to Damascus and back to Antioch. So huge, huge journey. Um, we're going to go through all of this. Um, over the study for the next couple of weeks. So I'm super, super stoked because this is, man, this is the heart of getting into where he starts planting churches that he then writes letters to, to follow up. Ephesians, well, there's Ephesus, right? And then we have Philippi, the uh, Philippians, book of Philippians, Corinth, first and second Corinthians, Thessalonica, we have first and second Thessalonians, 
Well, these letters were written to those churches. So it's very, very exciting. Um, definitely keep coming back as we move through those next three chapters on the missionary journey. Okay, that being the case, chapter 16, we're just going to do the first five verses. It's, it's going to be pretty quick. Um, Paul went on to Derby and Lystra, like I showed you on the map, where there was a disciple named Timothy, the son of a believing Jewish woman, but his father was a Greek. So this whole situation puts him as an interracial, if you will, father being a Gentile, not Jewish person. This was not necessarily the most favorable thing among Jewish people to have his father be a Greek. Well, his mother was a Jewish Christian. She believed in Christ. This is a good thing. It's very likely, it's not in the Bible, but it's very likely that when Paul first went to Lystra, maybe at that point, Timothy came to believe and his mother. And therefore, from there, he's coming back and he finds Timothy and everyone's speaking highly of him. And in verse three, it says, uh, or verse two, rather, the brothers and sisters at Lystra, the believers, and Iconium, both areas, spoke highly of him. Okay, well, Timothy's coming up in the ranks, not as a puffed up leader, not as an arrogant, status driven person, but as someone dedicated to the faith. And it's so much so that in verse three, it says Paul wanted Timothy to go with him. That's a big deal. So Paul said, all right. Paul later refers to Timothy as his true son in the faith. This is awesome. In fact, he writes two letters to Timothy that are recorded in the Bible, 1st and 2nd Timothy. And FYI, those are two of my all-time favorite books in the Bible. 1st Timothy breaks it down about leadership in the church, about order, about structure, but also about protecting our mind from the from the darts of the of the enemy man this is a great great he he really dedicated some discipling and mentoring into timothy and we get to glean some awesome stuff as a result of that and so i'm a happy spectator who gets to see that happen and then apply it to my own life anyway this is where it gets a little weird though look at verse three the the, the second part of it it says paul wanted timothy to go with him so he took him and circumcised him. What? Didn't we just hear from the Jerusalem council that Gentiles did not need to be circumcised? Well, yes, they did not need to be circumcised to be saved. Salvation is through Christ alone. However, let's look at the third part of this verse three. Because of the Jews who were in those places, since they all knew that his father was a Greek. So basically, for better or worse, the commentaries I've read have all stated that this was a good idea. Who am I to say differently? But I'll just give you the information. He, he did it for face value, really. He did it to not offend the Jews who were there because they knew Timothy was having his father as a Gentile. So they, okay, we better circumcise him. For me, this is legalistic. This is, um, you know, saving face i mean i don't know for me i have my own opinions about it but the point is it's typically spoken that this was a good idea and maybe i'm just not knowledgeable enough to understand why and i'm okay with that i will learn and i will seek more to hopefully find out that i'm wrong in my opinion but i i don't like that part but we don't have to like it right i said this in another study uh, i used a musical antidote and basically the, the the short of the story is if god says it's this chord it's this chord. So it's okay. It's okay to disagree sometimes. It's okay. It's normal to say, I don't really like that. However, we always put that thought back to Christ and say, but this is your world, God. And I want to follow you no matter what it is, because I know you are true. So my perception of my truth is based on what I want to be true. You guys got to catch that. My perception of truth is based on what I desire to be true. Therefore, if it's in conflict with what God said is true, I got to check myself. I don't have to tell God he's wrong. So the point I'm making is I don't have to agree with it, but it falls in line with my head that, okay, this is what it is. 
but I study it. I learn more. Why don't I agree with it, right? Let's let's discover that. Let's why? Let's find out. So it's just a good question mark. I talked about question marks yesterday. It's a good question mark, right? Let let me find out more about that. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, verse four, and then we're almost out of here. Two more verses. As they traveled through the towns, they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and elders at Jerusalem for the people to observe. This was the letter that was written as a result of the Jerusalem council, telling the Gentiles they do not need to be circumcised to be saved and to abstain from sexual immorality and a few other things. So they were giving that information. And then verse five, so the churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. Wow. It's again, it's it's not necessarily revival, but it's certainly worth noting that there was some awesome stuff going on here. That being the case, that word strengthened um, in Greek, which the New Testament was written in Greek, that word is actually saying um, made firm, made solid. That's the specific word of our definition that we could just say strengthened. In English, while more specifically fleshed out, it means that it was made firm. So they were made firm and solid in the faith. And what happened as a result? People came daily and found Christ. So that tells me my theology knowledge is important. I need to know what the Bible says because what the Bible says is what God says. So I need to be aware so that I can stand firm in the faith and be solid on a solid foundation of Christ so that I can properly speak for him because our message is his message. It doesn't matter who's the one delivering the message. It doesn't. Senior pastor, uh, associate pastor, worship, pa it does not matter. Who are we to elevate men when really we are all equal in God's eyes? There's a place for leadership in the church. It's spoken about in the Bible. There's a place for teaching. There's a place for shepherding and pastoring. There's a place for elders and deacons. All of these things should be in, in the church. This is correct. But no one should be elevated past another. So I don't care if it says senior pastor or associate pastor. Is that person speaking God's truth? Okay, then I'm listening. The deliverer does not matter. It's what's being delivered that's important. But again, all these things are proper to have this order in church. Senior pastors versus associate pastors, I'm, I'm doing my own research on that. Um, I don't know how I feel about that yet. I think any pastor, uh, if, if the church has more than one pastor, I think anyone should be alternating preaching. But again, hey, personal opinion. I don't see it in the Bible either way, but I'm going to look further to see if there's anything in the Bible that supports a senior pastor uh, giving sermons every week. I'm going to check that out because I have seen a lot of associate and worship pastors who have a whole lot of stuff to offer who never get to the pulpit. And to me, that's, that's a saddening. It's a disappointment. So long story short, I'm going to do my research on that. Um, I'm not trying to shatter anybody's idea of church. I'm just saying there are a lot more voices that are not being heard. And I would appreciate hearing what God has instilled in them in their way of delivering the message. That being the case, love you guys. Have a great day. Look forward to chapter 16, Book of Acts, starting Thursday in, in verse 6. Because remember, Wednesdays, one of my favorite, is Topical Wednesday. It's not Tropical Wednesday. I, won't, I will not be wearing a Hawaiian shirt. However, I will be delivering a great message of some sort of topic. I have no idea what yet but it's going to be great. So come and see. And we look forward to that. God bless you guys. Have a great day.